this story came out a few days ago, and I've been itching to get on the air and talk about it. This is in Mediaite. They say, exclusive. Steven Crowder sent photos of his genitals and exchanged drugs in super creepy workplace, ex-staffers say. So we already got a little taste of this recently. Uh, there was that video that came out showing how he treated his wife. Spoiler alert, not good. Uh, it bordering on uh, abusive. It's... Okay, you could go back and watch that uh, segment if you'd like and see all the details of it. We also know that there are other people who he's worked with who've come out and been like, yeah, the guy is uh, super creepy, he's a menace, and he loves showing his balls and his dick to people. Well, now, look, apparently it wasn't like, tee hee hee, a one-off, oh look, here's my dick. It was more like, uh, I'm gonna show you your di my dick, I'm gonna show your grandma my dick, I'm gonna show... Your, um, your uncle my dick, I'm gonna put my dick uh, on your dick, and I'm gonna uh, try to wave it around in the air like a lightsaber so everybody sees. Like, the, the endless list. Okay, l I'm gonna stop bearing the lead here. Let's dive into it. There's a lot, of, a lot of information here. Steven Crowder has been a lightning rod for controversy since he launched his new online show, Ladder with Crowder, but behind the scenes, his bombastic behavior has taken center stage with allegations of abusive behavior toward his estranged wife, as well as claims of toxic workplace conduct by former employees. They'll explain here in a second, but unless you think, well, all this is speculation or they're just gunning for him or whatever, there's like three or four different sources here. Now the fallout from the contentious divorce as well as Crowder's alleged workplace misconduct threatens to derail the enormously popular show that once landed its right-wing star with a $50 million offer from the Daily Wire. Hey, by the way, what happened to that offer? <laughs> what ended up happening with that? Oh, that's right. He rejected it to virtue signal against the Daily Wire and against Jeremy Boring and uh, so sort of tanked a giant contract, played the victim, acted like it was slavery, and then now his media empire is imploding. Hilarious. Couldn't script it. Mediaite spoke with five former show staffers and one source close to Crowder under the condition of anonymity due to fear of retaliation, who described a workplace rife with bullying, alarming and unpredictable behavior, as well as lewd sexual workplace misconduct. Earlier this month, after repeated suspensions, Lateral Crowder decamped from YouTube, where commanded a mighty audience of 5.8 million subscribers. They go on to say he went to Rumble, which is, uh, you know, a smaller platform, and now his last five shows have averaged 288,000. So, he used to get millions, now he gets 288,000. Look, it's just the fact of the matter that Rumble is a smaller platform, of course that's gonna happen. And by the way, I can't prove this, but my speculation based on what I've seen from being in this business is, I think Rumble juices their numbers. I don't even think their numbers are real. Okay, let's continue. The show's viewership troubles, uh, follow years of alleged misconduct behind the scenes. One former Ladder with Crowder employee told Media that during his time on the show, he received unsolicited, sexually graphic texts that include photos of Crowder's genitalia. Those texts and images were reviewed by Mediaite. <laughs> now, you might be thinking, well, hold on now. If they have it, why didn't they run it? Well, if they were to run it, that could be considered revenge porn, and revenge porn is illegal in many states. So, I actually support that they didn't run it, because that's like, you know, that crosses into a legal gray area, and in my opinion, it's not even really a gray area. It's, uh, it's wrong. I guess you can make the argument that with Crowder in particular, he was obviously showing his junk to everybody anyway, so he has no objection to it being seen. Um, but I, either way, if I was the head of Mediaite and I had to make the decision, I wouldn't have run it. But still, they have a tremendous number of sources. In the moment, we dismissed it as sort of frat boy humor. In hindsight, it's super creepy and felt groomerish. So you guys all know the moral panic that we've heard time and time again on the right the anti-groomer talk. Well, it turns out that one of their top media superstars is being alleged of former employees of being groomer-ish. It always felt like childish behavior in the moment, then felt predatory in hindsight. Like he was always testing people's comfort levels with that kind of behavior because he was the boss and he had no accountability. It just continued to happen. There was no one trusted to complain to. In addition to receiving unwanted sexual text messages, the former employee alleged that Crowder habitually exposed himself to other male staffers, a claim backed up by two other sources. Quote, in regards to exposing himself in general, to my knowledge, he only exposed himself to male staffers. It happened all the time. It was a regular occurrence. It usually happened when he was in a really good sort of manic mood. Cocaine, anybody? So while we are... Uh, so... While we all were disgusted by it, and it was never welcomed, it was preferable to him being in a bad mood and how he treated people in that state. Could you imagine the, the levels of toxicity at your workplace where the 
best case scenario is hopefully my boss flashes his dick, which I don't want to see because I'd rather have him be in a manic happy mood than in an angry mood because we've all seen how he is when he's angry and it's even worse. We got to call a spade a spade here too. Crowder is deeply anti-gay. Deeply anti-gay. And shocker, he only shows his dick to other male employees. Huh. Gee, I wonder why that is. I wonder. You know who shows their dick to their male counterparts relentlessly? People who want to show their dick to their male counterparts relentlessly. That's who does it. So the idea, like, they point out, like, at the time we thought it was just, like, juvenile humor. Now, in retrospect, it seems groomerish. Yeah, you don't say. It was never just, like, tee-hee-hee, -hee, innocent fun. We're just joking. Hope oh, my balls are on your forehead. That's not how it, how it works. The dude wants dick play with dudes. By the way, there's more evidence to that in a little bit. Buckle up. Steven never explained it. We never talked about it. It would just happen. And everyone would either throw out a fake uncomfortable laugh or show clear disgust, which Steven interpreted at his, as his reward for what he did. The more disgusted everyone seemed, the more pleasure he seemed to get from it. It's like he couldn't understand that we weren't in on his joke. You know what this reminds me of? And spoiler alert for those of you who haven't seen Succession. But it reminds me of Roman from the show Succession, who gets off on, like, some sort of humiliation and being unwanted. And he gets off on things that are super taboo. So he, like, you know, he's attracted to his the, like, 65-year-old female executive when he's, you know, whatever, 32 or however old he is. And, like, this reminds me of that. He clearly is getting some sort of sexual pleasure from everybody being super uncomfortable and not liking what he's doing. I, You know, I hate to make this analogy as well, but it, it sort of rings true. It almost reminds me of what we learned about Louis C.K. How Louis C.K. Uh, would ask female comedians who are newer in the game, much less power, much less notoriety. He would ask them, like, hey, could I jack off in front of you? And then before they could give an answer, and they're obviously they're stunned and they're shocked and they don't know how to react, and he'd, uh, he'd whip his dick out and start jacking off. And for some people, it's like that. The fact that the person feels violated and humiliated and doesn't want to see it and doesn't want to be there, like, that's the thing that makes these people get their rocks off. It's a particular kind of fetishism. And it's, uh, it's, it's disturbing. In response to a request for comment, Ladderworth Crowder CEO Gerald Morgan Jr. told me, while Ladderworth Crowder does not provide details on personal private medical matters or personal issues, or personnel issues, it is important to note that many of these claims are missing context. Wow. Clear misrepresentations or outright falsehoods. Missing context? In what context is it okay for a boss to go to their employees and take his balls out? Repeatedly. Over and over. All the time. Another source close to Crowder also said they witnessed him expose himself to male staff to male staff in the office, but chalked it up to childish behavior. Quote, I have personally witnessed that on one occasion. They said, my personal theory is that he is a man child and he just thinks it's funny, like boys in middle school playing pranks on each other in the locker room. That to me seems to be his mentality. Could it be a power move? Possibly. He does virtually nothing that a grown man should do for himself. Washes his own laundry, prepares his own food, buys his own groceries. Most of the time, someone else does all that for him. So he's like a child that needs to be taken care of, and his humor reflects that type of childish behavior. That is a very kind interpretation. I think it goes deeper than that. I think it's sexual. Another former employee said incidents of general exposure in the workplace were so routine that they became almost unremarkable. The guys just talked about it amongst themselves, and I don't want to say it just became normal because it became less of a big deal. So there's a case to be made he was grooming employees, the former employee said. Stephen may excuse some of it, saying he was friends with some of his employees, but that again draws some questions. There are power dynamics at play, regardless of how friendly you are with your staff, and also just don't send your penis in a message. So gross. Yeah, look, I'm not in entertaining this conversation. When you have the, the boss and the employee relationship, the power issue is, is impossible to navigate. It's impossible. It's one thing if you, like, meet beforehand and develop a relationship, and then you get into a workplace where that's the dynamic. But if the dynamic is boss-employee, and from there on, there's, you know, some sort of suggestive stuff like this. It is manipulative by its very nature. It's, it, this isn't even the same thing as, like, you know, employees who are on equal footing hitting it off or whatever. That's not the same thing. You don't have the same power dynamic in that instance. 
in this instance, it's just like, what are they going to do when you pull this move on them? If they don't like it, if they feel like it's unacceptable, what are they going to do? They can't go to anybody higher than you. You're the highest. Like, and you might retaliate if they actually are like, hey, I'm drawing a line here, bro. So, it, clearly, clearly it's harassment at the very least. A different ex-staffer said Crowder would often make uncomfortable comments during a men's only Bible study held in 2020. Men's only Bible study. The staffer said Crowder frequently remarked that, quote, men used to be more physically intimate with each other and then would reference a passage from the Bible where Abraham's servant put his hand on Abraham's inner thigh to be closer to Abraham's descendant's balls. Do you see what's going on here? The picture is beginning to get more and more clear. He used his position of power and authority and his celebrity to, like, coerce and manipulate his employees into being his perpetual sexual harassment victims. Always showing them his balls, always showing them his dick. There was that story of the guy who was his sidekick, who, by the way, they called Not Gay Jared. Yeah, that's the name you want to give somebody if you want to let everybody know they're really not gay. I'm not gay! Not gay Jared! I'm not gay! I'm not gay! I don't like dick. I don't like throbbing cock. But anyway, he puts his... He put his balls or his dick, like, on his shoulder or some shit and was, like, laughing about it. That's what we learned in the last, the last, uh, leaks. And now we're learning, apparently, this was, like, a daily occurrence where he's flashing everybody his junk. But you had a, you had a Bible study with other men where you're basically trying to weasel your way into, like, Hey, man, back in the Bible days, like, they used to, you know, they'd, like, touch each other's balls and stuff, bro. I, I don't know about you, but me, I want to be more biblical. I want to be more biblical. I want to be closer to God. Maybe the right thing to do to get closer to God is if you, like, sit on my lap and, you know, play with my dick and stuff, bro. Oh, my God. This is so transparent. This is so... Who are you fooling? Everybody sees what's going on. Everybody knows what you're doing. Allegations of Crowder revealing his genitalia in the workplace were first reported by the New York Post. In response, Crowder mocked the allegations during his get on his show. The Post report came in the wake of the publication of... Ring video footage from Crowder's home, which showed him berating his then-pregnant wife. Quote, I will fuck you up. That's what he said to his wife. The two are now embroiled in a bitter divorce. Yet Crowder's alleged pension for exhibitionism and angry outbursts are only a portion of the inappropriate workplace behavior described by sources who work for the YouTube star. Multiple former staffers and a source close to Crowder claim the conservative firebrand would offer an would offer and ask for prescription drugs like Klonopin, an, anti an anti-convulsant used to treat seizures. It's, it's, you know, sort of like a Xanax type thing. It's a downer. Uh, it's also used to prescribe to treat anxiety as well as cannabis gummies and opiates like Percocet. Mediate reviewed text exchanges between Crowder and former employees confirming these claims. So in other words, he's also a drug addict. When it comes to stuff like that, I hope he gets rehabilitation. I hope he gets better. I hope it's sympathy and empathy and not a, a punitive approach. But this is the guy who's been a drug warrior for decades. This is a guy who thinks you should be locked up for weed. Never mind harder drugs than that, like the drugs he's taking. Stephen was known for passing out prescription drugs fairly freely. One former employee alleged, It's surprising to the employees when your boss is offering and or asking for things like that. See, all of them had to know he was a fraud, too, because he does the whole I'm deeply conservative shtick. He was all, all pro the drug war. He was all anti-gay. And behind the scenes, he's thinking about cock 24-7, showing his cock 24-7, and popping all sorts of drugs. Because the work environment is so crazy, employees end up getting desensitized to the point when, to the point where when things like that occur, it almost just seems normal. It's not until you actually step away for a bit that you realize how wrong these types of things are. The former employees, the former employee who received genitalia photos from Crowder shared a similar sentiment about working for the YouTube star. We've often debated this. It's like any abusive relationship. When it's good, it can be really fun. Most people enjoy the work itself. When it's bad, it's really bad. But over time, most, most become so numb to it that they don't see how messed up the place is until they get out. In the past, Crowder's troubles have prompted him to step away from the show. On December 10th, 2020, Crowder sent an email with the subject line, Official notice, some life decisions, which announced to his staff his plans to retire. This is in 2020. In the lengthy message, Crowder apologized for his behavior. Quote, quote, I hope everyone here understands just how much you mean to me and how sorry I am for falling short of my duties every time I've spoken out of anger or ego. Everyone here deserves better. Everyone here deserves a leader that they can believe in and, and in real world results. I just don't think I'm the guy for that job. I love you all very much. Three ex-staffers claim Crowder checked into Carrollton Springs, a psychiatric and chemical dependency facility in Texas, shortly after that email was sent. So apparently, he did go to rehab for a while. Apparently, he did. 
which I didn't know that. Did you know that? I don't know if that was public news before this came out here. Before long, though, Crowder returned to the show and continued to broadcast to his large audience. Three years later, a source close to Crowder said working for the scandal-embroiled host remains very stressful. It's like walking on eggshells most of the time, they said. Most employees are overworked and underpaid. Nothing is ever good enough. Office morale is extremely low, and many employees have stated that they want to give up and quit. This reminds me of that video. Brian Callen, the comedian, recently started working with Crowder, and he got he was recording like Instagram Live or something behind the scenes, and Crowder like didn't really realize he was being recorded, and Callen sort of mentioned that he's recording, and then Crowder like flips out on him. Apparently, Dave Landau, his other ex-host, he used to have a button that he would press, which is like the Dave don't talk button because he didn't want to feel like he's getting interrupted by his co-host. He was a colossal piece of garbage. Uh, you know, it, it, all this was sort of, I, I could intuitively know these things, but getting the verification really is something. It really is something. Look, he's a deep, deep, deep closet case. He hates himself. Um... He, he externalizes that hatred. And, you know, it, it's just massive self-loathing. And it manifests in deeply terrible politics on uh, gay and trans issues. And clearly he's a drug addict, even though he fancies himself a drug warrior. And um, it's just, it's wild to see the way the sausage is really made with a lot of these people. Like, deeply flawed doesn't even begin to describe it. Doesn't even begin to describe it. And this is a person who is basically a conservative ideological thought leader for the right. And you want to talk about blind leading the blind. I don't think it gets any more clear than this. And it's kind of amazing to me to think of like a new employee showing up to work on the Louder with Crowder show and expecting one thing and then getting this. It's like, how do you not realize that this is eventually going to come out? When you talk such a big game about, you know, more of uh, being moral and caring about family values and then you're doing drugs all the time and flashing everybody your dick and harassing everybody in sight and super unhinged and have anger management problems how do you not realize that this stuff you're not going to keep this under wraps the dude's unhinged the dude's a menace and um <laughs> no pun intended the way he acted was very ballsy hey y'all do me a favor and like and subscribe it helps out big time in the algorithm click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop and watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.